I recently found this video by Adafruit and I love this pixel dust. It was a great inspiration to make my own physics based toy. I already had a 16x16 16 16 LED matrix and an accelerometer. Then I bought a battery holder and a power converter for it. And the Arduino I still had laying around. And with all these parts ready we can start tinkering. Once I had the screen up and running I considered my options for what I wanted to show on it. There's this programming language for graphics and it's called processing and it has some really nice examples. I was just flipping through the examples and then this one caught my eye. It's a great demonstration of the laws of motion. I've ported the code from processing to the Arduino environment and now we have our bouncing balls. The Arduino Nano doesn't have enough memory to also add the accelerometer so we're gonna upgrade to the Arduino Mega. I'm just playing with it here and it's really cool. Oh, this is so awesome. Okay, let's add a special touch. Every time the balls hit each other or the walls, I want it to make a noise. So let's put a synthesizer on that Arduino. Uh, I've been working on this the whole day. I've switched from an Arduino Nano to an Arduino Mega to an ESP8266 and it's all giving me shit. Either the animation is f***ed up or the audio is crap. So I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll just toss in two Arduinos, one for the animation and one for the audio, or, or take another look at why it's not working, but uh, I'm done for today. The next day I refound my positivity. I did add a second Arduino and that's running the audio now, while the first Arduino is running the graphics, the physics and the accelerometer. I've actually used this specific synthesizer library for the Arduino before to make a fidget spinner synthesizer. Check out the video here. I think all we need to do now is add a bunch of more features, iron out some of the bugs, let's go. I wrote some code so that if you flip the accelerometer you get a random patch for the graphics and for the synthesizer. Awesome. Well, it's been a long day of programming, but I'm done. We've got all the features we want, so now I can look at the mechanical assembly. Okay, let's go. I want to mellow out the light from the LED matrix a little bit, so I'm 3D printing a diffuser. I tried a bunch of different thicknesses of the diffuser, and also I varied the distance between the diffuser and the LED matrix. To make sure the LED matrix or the diffuser wouldn't start sagging, I put a spacer in between them. However, this becomes very visible in the end product and I don't really like the look of it. So with this issue in mind, I started brainstorming. I asked my girlfriend, like, how can we keep the screen from sagging downwards? And I'll show you our solution in a moment. I put all the components on the screen to get an idea of where they would fit in the final assembly. And then I drew a very nice housing in FreeCAD. There's a sliding lid and this is the diffuser where we project our LED matrix on. And to keep the screen from sagging down too much I made this grid. It should be stiff enough to keep the LED matrix right in place. And I really like the look of this grid so much that I wanted to make a small animation with it. Enjoy! It's so pretty. It's very complex and actually I'm printing it right now on the X1. And then we can print the housing, wire up the electronics and see if it works, if we have our toy ready. So let's go. Oh man, that's perfect. I love this. So the way I used to make these internals is to make a PCB and have everything bolted together and it's a really nice and maintainable way to make something but it takes a huge amount of time and this is probably going to be a one-off. So I figured I've shown you all I can do the complicated way of doing things and for this one we're just going to use a lot of hot glue on the inside. So there it is. When I tested the toy, it didn't work. The accelerometer wasn't working at all. So now I gotta figure out what's wrong. And this is how I felt about it. That sucks. So I just have these two wires in reverse or these two. I think these are the easiest to actually replace. I'm just gonna try to peel off this hot glue and then uh, switch the wires. Oh, if I only had used the services of the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, I wouldn't be in this whole mess. If I would have gone to PCBWay.com and filled in their form, I would have nice PCBs and I didn't have to mess around with all these wires and hot glue. 
Thanks for sponsoring this video, PCB Way. Okay, I'm just putting them back here and now we can apply more hot glue. What other YouTube channel gives you such a nice close-up of hot glue being applied? I dare you to find one. I shouldn't do it that carelessly. Look at how nice all these little details are. So moment of truth. Will all the stuff that I drew up actually fit in here? Oh, <laughs> I think it works. However, I did really mess up. We can't reach any of the switches or connectors right now. Put them at the wrong spot. Let's reprint and finish it up. Okay, new box. So we can put this part in the box and our display. Oh, so satisfying. Screw it shut. So we have our on off switch right here. Let's turn it on. Ooh. And now if we want a different seed, a different randomness, we just flip it. And we get different shapes and different sounds. Oh, and look how nicely this works. You can just plug in from the side. The only thing I'm missing is a standby mode, where if you don't touch the toy, it automatically starts moving around. So that's exactly what I've built. I've added a force pulling the balls on the inside. I've added a force swirling the balls to the outside and I've added some drag. Thanks so much for watching through the entire video. I enjoyed making this toy. I love toys in general and uh, to make one of my own, that's just really cool. And to have a bunch of people watching me do it, that's even cooler. If you enjoy the stuff that I make, please consider becoming a subscriber and if you want to go the extra mile, I also have a Patreon and a YouTube channel membership you can participate in. I've tried to come up with a whole load of fun perks if you subscribe, but the bottom line is, if you subscribe to my Patreon or YouTube channel membership, you allow me to make things like this awesome toy. I would be very grateful. And while I was editing this video, I actually got my first Patreon supporter. Thanks so much, LowXYNova, for your support. It goes a long way. The link to my Patreon is in the description, but you can also hit the join button below the video. Well, thanks for watching and until next time, 